Guns are loud. That much is obvious. But what if you could reduce that deafening bang with a simple tube of metal? That's the promise of a gun suppressor, often wrongly called a silencer. Thanks to action movies and spy thrillers, suppressors have picked up a lot of myths along the way. But the real science behind them is way more fascinating and way less Hollywood. Today we're unpacking how does a gun suppressor work, what they can and can't do, and why they're more about physics than silence, right here on History of Simple Things. Before we understand how a suppressor works, we need to understand why guns are loud at all. Because once you know what's causing the noise, you'll understand what the suppressor is trying to control. When you fire a gun, several things happen almost instantly. First, the firing pin strikes the primer of the bullet cartridge. This ignites the gunpowder inside. The gunpowder burns extremely fast, essentially exploding, and generates a huge volume of hot gas. That gas pushes the bullet down the barrel and out the muzzle at supersonic speeds. That explosion? That's your main noise source. It's like a miniature thunderclap happening just inches from your face. But it's not just the bang of the explosion. There are three main sounds that happen when a gun fires. The muzzle blast. That's the loud crack of high-pressure gas escaping the barrel. The sonic boom. If the bullet travels faster than sound, it creates a sonic crack, like a whip. The mechanical noise. The sound of the action cycling, especially in semi-automatic or automatic weapons. Of those, the loudest is the muzzle blast. That's the one suppressors are designed to handle. Okay, so what's a suppressor, really? At its core, a suppressor is a metal tube that attaches to the end of a gun's barrel. Inside that tube, a series of chambers and baffles that redirect and slow down the expanding gases that follow the bullet out of the barrel. Think of it kind of like a car's muffler, but for explosions. It's not silencing the bang, it's managing it. These internal chambers give the gas more space to expand and cool down before it hits the open air. And when you slow down gas expansion, you reduce the sudden pressure difference that creates that sharp cracking noise. The suppressor doesn't actually touch the bullet. It just deals with the violent aftermath of the gunpowder explosion, channeling, controlling, and calming the gases. Let's zoom in a little closer. How exactly does a suppressor manage to reduce that bang? When the bullet leaves the barrel, the hot, high-pressure gas behind it also wants to escape, fast. If there's nothing in its way, it explodes out into the open air, causing a loud boom. But when you attach a suppressor, those gases are forced to pass through a series of baffles, metal dividers that create a zigzag path for the gas to follow. Some suppressors also include expansion chambers, which are just open spaces where the gas can slow down and expand. As the gas slows down and cools inside the suppressor, the pressure difference between the inside and the outside becomes smaller. The result? Less of that ear-splitting pop. You're not eliminating sound. You're reducing the pressure spike that creates it. Some suppressors also have a mesh or fluid inside to absorb heat and noise, though this is less common in modern designs. Those types are called wet suppressors, and while they can be even quieter, they're messier and require maintenance. Despite the name silencer, suppressors can't make a gun truly silent. And that's important to understand. Remember the sonic boom we talked about? That comes from the bullet breaking the sound barrier, which is around 343 meters per second, or roughly 1,125 feet per second. A suppressor can't stop that. If the bullet's going supersonic, you'll hear the crack no matter what. The only way around this is to use subsonic ammunition. 
rounds that travel slower than the speed of sound. These are quieter, but they also have less power and range. And then there's the mechanical action, the clunk of the slide, the ejection of the spent casing. A suppressor doesn't affect that either. So with a suppressor and subsonic ammo, a pistol might sound like a loud clap rather than a gunshot, but it's still audible, especially indoors or up close. So if it's not completely silent, why bother? Suppressors are actually pretty practical tools. They aren't just for sneaky movie assassins. In real life, they're used by hunters to protect their hearing and avoid scaring away game. Military and police for tactical operations where reducing noise and muzzle flash matters. Recreational shooters who want to preserve hearing and be polite at ranges. Instructors to reduce noise for students during training. Gunfire can reach upwards of 160 decibels, which is well above the threshold for hearing damage. A suppressor can reduce that by 20 to 35 decibels, depending on the caliber and setup. That's the difference between needing double hearing protection and not. Here's where things get a little murky. Suppressor legality varies a lot depending on where you live. In the United States, they're legal in most states, but heavily regulated. To own one, you have to go through the National Firearms Act, NFA, process, which includes submitting fingerprints, undergoing a background check, paying a $200 tax stamp, and waiting several months for approval. In some other countries, oddly enough, suppressors are encouraged for noise control. In places like New Zealand or parts of Europe, they're seen as good etiquette, like using a muffler on your car. So, in the end, how does a gun suppressor work? It works by controlling and slowing down the explosion that happens when a gun fires. Through a smart combination of baffles, chambers, and physics, it makes that blast more manageable, less noisy, less punishing on the ears, and just a little less dramatic. But it's not magic. It doesn't make guns silent. It just makes them a little more civil. Whether you're into history, mechanics, or just fascinated by how things work, the suppressor is a perfect example of human ingenuity meeting raw force and trying to tame it just a bit. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.